All right, guys, hang with me. This is the last informational lesson or lecture, if you will, before we actually start the good stuff. And you won't have to worry if you start the series. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. I'm going to take you through everything. I'm going to tell you how much to do it, what to practice. There's not going to be any question about what you need to do to be on your way to be an excellent sight reader. And I'm saying excellent because uh, I know that you can do it if you do the right things. All right, uh, and we're going to retrain your brain to uh, not use your ears so much when we're trying to read, trying to learn to see musical patterns on the page, transferring it to the keyboard quickly as possible, uh, and then our ear will be our our judge and kind of help us with that to see if you know we're playing correctly, and uh, it, it'll be an aid to us. But our reading will be the thing that's in the foremost, the thing that will will, will uh, lead us. All right. Now, we need to understand what I call the seven principles of sight reading, and this is my own stuff I've come up with. Uh, over my 20 plus years of teaching, I've taught a lot of kids, a lot of adults who uh, could had a good ear, had musical talent, could not read music to save their lives. It was just a problem for them was frustrating because they knew they could play all this cool stuff but they just couldn't read it and uh, you know just immediately whenever I had them try to read something they immediately would go to their ear immediately go to ear and memorization and not read alright so we're, we're wanting to learn how to read so this is not going to be as easy uh, you know just do a couple things and you're a good sight reader no it's not what's going to be you're going to have to put forth the effort, you're going to have to trust what I'm showing you here, you're going to have to do it uh, and, and do it religiously, and you'll see some results, I promise you. Uh, but here are the, here's some things as you're going through. In the next lesson, we're going to actually start some playing and actual uh, exercises to help your reading to get better, uh, to retrain your brain. But we need to understand these seven things. I would write these down. I would, uh, on a piece of paper and laminate it or, you know, put it up on a poster, wherever you're practicing so that you always have this. These are the keys, okay? These are the things that i found that will help you to become a better reader. And let's define sight reading. What I mean by that is if I set a piece of music in front of you, how well can you read it through the first time and play it through that very first time? How well can you do that? Um, are you not able to do it at all? Okay, that's, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about sight reading. Seeing things at sight the first time through. Not only playing the notes, but playing the rhythms as well. I'm going to give you a lot of help on rhythm, too. Uh, that you don't usually get a lot of help on rhythm in, in, uh, in, uh, in music instruction for some reason. Uh, first thing is the correct level of difficulty. Okay? Now, if you're trying to get your sight reading better and you're reading something on your playing level, big mistake. If your playing level and your reading level is this far apart and you're trying to practice your sight reading, up here on your playing level, you're going to get frustrated and quit and stop and you're wasting your time. If we're going to get better at sight reading, we need to be down here on our reading level. Even if that's Mary Had a Little Lamb, even if it's uh, you know Alouette or Old MacDonald Had a Farm, if that's your reading level, that's where we need to be. Okay. So choosing the correct level of difficulty is important. We want it to be not so easy that you can breeze through it and it's no, no trouble at all, but you need to be able to get through it pretty well with just a little bit of difficulty. That's where we want it. We want you to be able to get through it, but have a little bit of difficulty as you're getting through the piece. That's a good uh, definition of a good level for you to work on your sight reading. But the second thing is the quantity, high quantity not looking for quality, okay? We're not looking for quality. You've done that. You've done that for years. You've hammered out one measure and memorized it. Quality, quality. Next measure, memorization. Quality, quality. No, we're going for quantity for sight reading. We want a lot of things going past these eyes. We want these eyes to see a lot of music and to have to uh, come up with what the notes are many times, many new things. High quantity, not the same thing over and over again. Not something that's really hard uh, playing it till you memorize it, but a high quantity of things. Lots of things going in front of those eyes of yours. Okay? Minimal repetition. 
Are you one of those that starts a piece when you're sight reading through it? You hit, make a mistake, you, you stop, and then you go up, and you start all over to the beginning. Don't do that. Don't start all the way over. If the piece might be too hard. In that case, you've got to find something else to work on that's easier. Okay? But if you make a mistake, do not start over. Fix it and keep going. Fix it right where you are and keep going right where you are. You shouldn't have to depend on all the previous notes to get you on to the next part. Okay? We want to get out of that habit. If you make a mistake, fix it right where you are and keep going. Don't go back and repeat the beginning over and over again. Also, we're not going to repeat the same piece or same exercise so many times that you remember it. You get it in your ear and you're not reading the notes anymore because that's going to happen. We're going to get off of that piece and we're going to go to another one. As soon as you start memorizing, we get off of it and we go to something else so that we have high quantity. Your eyes are always seeing something new. As soon as you start to memorize, those eyes start to do that and you're not reading anymore. All right? The next thing, don't do too much at one time. We're going to choose small pieces to work on our sight reading, okay? They're not going to be pages and pages. They're going to be a couple of lines of music. And then the next piece will be another couple of lines. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Small pieces because if you stay on something that's too big, you get bored, you get frustrated, you want to quit. If it's over quickly and you did it okay, you feel like you've completed something. You feel like you were a success at that piece. And confidence is made from small successes. Many, many, many small successes builds confidence, okay? Confidence doesn't come from one big accomplishment of one thing. It comes from small successes built one on top of another. A repeated pattern of having success on these small pieces, not repeating them over and over, but going to another small piece, doing a high quantity of pieces, things you haven't seen, no, something new, something new, something new, something new, on a, di on a level of difficulty that is not too hard, okay? I'd rather you err on the side of too easy than too difficult. Now, you know, we've already kind of talked about this, move forward always. When you're sight reading, I always see bad sight readers starting over. Why do they start over? Because they know the beginning because they played it so many times and it gets them to the next part. You're making a chain. This measure connects to this measure. This measure connects to this measure. You have a chain going. Take that link out of the chain, make a mistake. Oh, where am I? Got to start all over so I can feel that chain again so I can keep going. Oh, what a that's miserable doing it that way. Uh, and I did that way for years. It's miserable. It's uh, it's boring, and we feel like, you know, we're just not good at reading music, and which is true, <laughs> and that's why we're doing this. Um, move forward always. Number six, feel for keys, eyes on music. Every time you look down, it takes your concentration off the music, and you take away, there's a little gap there in the process from page to eye to hand. You interrupt that process and you got to get it back. It slows you down. So we're going to be working on feeling for the keys. You're probably used to looking down every note, seeing what to play, looking back up, looking down, look up, look down, look up. And we want to cut out that middle step to where we feel for the keys. And you're going to miss some notes. Okay? You're going to miss some notes doing that if you're not used to feeling for the keys. But guess what? Your ear will tell you that you missed it. And guess what? Don't look down to fix it. Fix it without looking. Learn to play by feel. Feel those keys so that your eyes can stay on the music. So we have this continual pattern up music to eyes to hand and it's a continual circular thing and we don't interrupt it by looking down at the keys. Alright? Don't be afraid to miss a note. We're going to miss notes. Accept that. Just fix it and move forward. Number seven. Small, frequent practice sessions. The people that learn to play their instruments are not the ones that set down a timer for an hour every day and make themselves practice. What I'm asking from you is 30 minutes a day. You can do that however you want. You can do it all in one setting, sitting, or you can split it up into 10. You can do 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here, 30 minutes. And it's even good not to go over that because you don't want to burn yourself out. You don't want to overdo it. You can only learn so much. Your brain can only be retrained so much in one day. You can't force that, okay? So give me 30 minutes 
doing these exercises I'm going to start showing you in the next video. Uh, and your eyes are going to be open to a whole new world of being able to sight read well. And you will see immediate results uh, from the start. And it's a long road, okay? We've got to, like I keep saying, retrain your brain. But these seven right here are foundational to my system of learning to sight read. To retrain your brain. It's also good if you've never sight read, then you're, you're starting off from scratch. And we'll get you on the right foot to begin with, okay? So, learn these. Write them down, put them up somewhere, because we're going to be referring to these as we do our sight reading lessons. Also, check out my website, webpianoteacher.com.